In this section, we will be talking about the difference between speed and velocity. Speed is the total distance divided by the total time. Speed is a scalar measurement. It has no direction. For example, kicking a soccer ball so that it travels at 90 kilometers in 3 seconds. We calculate its average speed using the equation speed is equal to distance divided by time. By using this equation, you get speed is equal to 90 kilometers divided by 3 seconds. This then gives you a total of 30 kilometers per second. So a soccer ball would ultimately travel at 30 kilometers per second. We will now be talking about velocity. Velocity is a vector quantity and it has a direction. For example, crossing a soccer ball east from left to right on the soccer field so that it travels at 90 kilometers and reaches a forward in 3 seconds. We calculate the velocity by using the equation velocity is equal to displacement over time. Therefore, velocity is equal to 90 kilometers east divided by 3 seconds. This gives you a total of 30 kilometers per second east. Thus, the difference between speed and velocity is that speed is calculated using distance and velocity is calculated using displacement which gives velocity a direction that speed does not have. Shows the forces that affect the ball when it is kicked. At the top, you see the axis of rotation. When you want to curve the ball, you want it to rotate. So, you hit it on the side with lift side force. Also, if you go from the bottom, it gives flight direction, and the weight pushes down on the ball. The drag on the ball is what keeps it from flying forever. Weight and mass have effects on the sport. If the, ball, if the ball weighs more, it is harder to kick. The more the player weighs, the harder they can kick it. Friction is in soccer as well. Friction present, prevents your soccer ball from going forward forever when it is kicked. The soccer ball rubs against the ground, which causes resistance and slows the ball down. Gravity is another force that affects soccer. If there was no gravity, the soccer ball would fly through the air and never come back. The players also stay on the ground because of gravity. Altered gravity can change how high or low the ball goes. Momentum affects how far the soccer ball goes. If you have a lot of momentum when you kick the soccer ball, it will go faster. If you do not have enough momentum, the length the ball goes will still be less no matter how hard you kick the ball. As you can see in this recording, the ball is kicked and it goes to the top of the goal due to the power of the swing of his leg and the curve he puts on it. All the forces on the ball being used would be frictional force, tension force, normal force, air resistance force, applied force, spring force, and gravitational force. All these forces would be used in a way that the ball couldn't move unless it was affected by these forces. As a quick recap, I would like to remind you that motion is the displacement of an object over time. While speed, the scalar quantity, and thus has no direction, it presents itself as the magnitude of the velocity vector. What this means is that speed is the rate of something is moving but isn't linked to a certain direction. Say there is a force F like the one that is applied to a soccer ball with a mass m, which will then move a distance d within the set time t. This tells us that speed is equal to the total distance travelled divided by the time it travels. The t is the measurement of rate and direction. In other words, it incorporates the direction the football is travelling, whether it forward, positive, backward, negative, or some angle, along with the magnitude, which is its speed. Vector motion takes these ideas of kinematics and puts them into two dimensions. 
If you're unfamiliar with kinematics, it is essentially the study of motion of a body or system. Projectile motion is the curvilinear motion that occurs when objects are thrown. The path the projectile takes, in this case a football, is called its trajectory, and the shape is a parabola. The horizontal acceleration is zero, and the velocity remains constant. This assumes the only forces acting upon the ball is gravity and the initial kick, with zero air resistance. Still, we have to separate this into its separate components in order to fully grasp the movement of the object. So we separate the trajectory into both x and y components, which represent both the horizontal and the vertical parts of the motion respectively. What we observe from this is that if we have manipulate even a single component, we will greatly change the outcome of a given situation. For example, if we increase the velocity, the ball will travel further. If we manipulate the y component by varying the height, we will also see a change in the trajectory, even if the balls have the same velocity. In a moment, we will see how these components work with the problems and its equations. We use different equations given different variables. For example, a different equation would be used if you would like to find how far the ball goes, its peak height, or even the angle of its trajectory. Let's use David Beckham's 30-yard free kick in, the two, in 2002 to rocket England into the World Cup as an example. We will find the initial velocity David needed to kick the ball over the goalie's head and into the goal. The ball went into the net at 7 metres above the ground, making delta Y 7. The 30 meter distance of our free kick is our delta x. In order to do this problem, we need to remember that the final velocity was zero, and gravity is 9.8 meters a second, and there was no acceleration or wind at Wembley Stadium that day. We can use this equation shown previously to gain each component. We do this for first solving for our time with the x component of the equation. This gives us the opportunity to then factor in the height with our delta y. We then use basic algebra and geometry to combine the equations since we have all the factors besides our initial velocity. The vertical and horizontal components then can be mathematically combined using the tangent, sine over cosine, to find the ball's trajectory, which will then in turn tell us the initial velocity that David struck the ball with to put it over the wall and into the goal.